26 days to the 2024 polls. Hashtag Stop Galamse now still on. Good evening and welcome to News Night. Tonight, leadership of Ghana's Medical Association brings to the fore increasing cases of sexual harassment of patients by its members, revealing that a worrying chunk of its doctors are involved in alcoholism and drug abuse. There has been in extreme circumstances reported cases of sexual harassment perpetrated by health workers. The victims of our unprofessionalism choose to blame the witches and the wizards as well as a fear for for their predicament instead of taking on the system. We'd love to hear from patients as to why you are not taking up issues of medical negligence. We'll get to hear from the doctors themselves. Also tonight, Commissioner of Shraj becomes the latest to take on Ghana's judiciary, alluding to inherent rot, predictability and lack of independence following Ghana's devastating performance on the Mo Ibrahim Index on Governance. So I think the time has come for us to really set up the judiciary must sit up. It's not about trying to poo poo people and oh there's nothing, we have the independence, we can do this. Look, there is a rot in the system. We need to root it up and do the right thing. We'll also get to hear from former President Mahama who says rift between the judiciary and legislature on the vacant seat controversy cannot be resolved through legal means alone but requires a political solution. Na Minya as of opinion be any council of states uh, national peace. If I were the president, I would have made Afenyo Markin, the leader of the NPP, to withdraw the case from court. Then engage NDC leaders, the speaker, and bring in some respected clergy. And then back on the health front. When I hear that someone on the list is under, I ask myself, so will I also die? <laughs> A 13-year-old's plea for life-saving dialysis, along with appeals from over 400 other patients, reaches government as they pledge to fully cover dialysis costs beginning in December after a three-month pilot. Now, the data suggests that actually the cost can actually be take, can be accommodated by the NHI. Pilots has actually ended, right. so we are now bringing it permanently on the NHI. So it's starting on the 1st of December. We'll get to hear from the Renal Patients Association of Ghana who are praying this is not just another empty political promise. Uh, if only it's not a political talk and it's something they are going to do, it. And we can go. There have been a couple of meetings and then we've seen the actual. And the Business Bank of Ghana warns of severe set of uh, doctors and in health because the Ghana Medical Association has called out its own members of uh, rising cases of sexual harassment of patients. The GMA also reveals that a chunk of doctors are also involved in alcoholism and drug abuse. President of the Ghana Medical Association, Dr. Frank Strebo, raised these concerns that the Sister Sith GMA annual general meeting revealing that most victims unfortunately give up on the prosecution of these cases of sexual harassment we have some helpers there who are involved in alcoholism drug misuse and abuse which affect the quality of their lives there has been in extreme circumstances reported cases of sexual harassment perpetrated by health workers and yesterday the medical and dental cancer registrar dr divine Bayubala told us that there are a lot of pending cases of sexual harassment even before the council. We have had cases where doctors have been badly discussed on radio shows and other media outlets. There have been several legal suits against health facilities with the outcomes not being favorable to us as health workers. Indeed, sometimes we are left off the hook simply because the victims of our unprofessionalism choose to blame the witches and the wizards as well as a fear for for their predicament instead of taking on the system so when we pray we should pray for the witches and wizards they are saving us ladies and gentlemen professionalism to be should be our silent companion it has to work with us through our journey of working life it should always manifest at every opportunity. I know I have painted a great picture, but let us fortify our spirits against despair with curious agility and also balance our ambitions with our substance. Dr. Srebo also raised other concerns, including the lack of commitment to the job, especially among junior doctors. 
let me ask is professionalism in the health sector driven is there so much focus on greed and selfishness is there a lack of respect for colleagues and subordinates recently the junior doctors are holding various forum or fora and they are indicating that we are bullying them is it true but at least all of us can attest to the escalation of lateness to duty absenteeism poor documentation and also not dedicating enough time to our employers people walk into the hospital at nine by 12 they are working out you ask them they say they are done and yet they expect to be paid for working eight hours at least in a day well so that's uh, the ghana medical association president dr frank strebo and this issue has actually generated a lot of talk since they mentioned it over the weekend. Well, they've been addressing other issues, but it does appear that the GMA itself now wants patients that have suffered medical negligence to actually take on the system rather than say that um, we're leaving it to God amongst others. The cases of drug abuse, sexual harassment amongst others have also um, come up on this. But Evans, you recall that um, organized labor threatened a strike um, over the government's lack of action against illegal mining. Well, this particular issue we'll be getting back to. But Dr. Frank Strebo also took the opportunity at that meeting to address the issues about why they did not participate in that strike. Galamse is something most of us hate. The destruction of our forest reserves and the pollution of our water bodies is unpardonable. I will, however, want to address the ghosts of organized labor at this Congress. Indeed, this is a creation of our own, the Frankenstein of our time, which may continue to haunt us all into the future. It must be stated clearly and unambiguously that Ghana Medical Association is not a subset of organized labor. We are not. We are an independent association and a labor union that takes and should take decisions on our own terms and principles. GMA cannot and should not be salivating when organized labor rings the bell. The decision by the GMA not to join the organized labor strike or intended strike on the 10th of, 10th of October 2024 was a majority decision by the council of the GMA. The decision was taken on the 3rd of October 2024. Two days after the decision was taken, before members could be informed, there was a leak from the council platform to the media. This planted the virus of chaos. Uh, I want to return to the uh, main issues raised by the GMA uh, president there about the conduct of some of the doctors, uh, the misconduct really, and the leading to, in some cases some medical negligence, but also harassment of some patients. Uh, in the consultant room. Um, I will be bringing in uh, pretty shortly uh, Isaac Ampoma, who is a Greater Accra Regional Vice Chair of the Coalition of NGOs in Health, but also joining me right now is Dr. Eli Kwesi Atikwi. You remember him as a former registrar of the Medical and Dental Council. And of course, he's a doctor as well. Thank you so much for joining us here on Newsnight. So we are listening to um, the president of your association raise concerns about sexual abuse alcoholism, substance abuse, amongst others. Is this the kinds of doctors that you were hoping that we would have as a country, you would say? Um, good evening to your listeners and thank you for having me. Um, I don't think the expectation of the regulator, that the Medical and Dental Council, is uh, the fact that we'll have doctors who will abuse alcohol and other substances. Yeah or would really harass patients. That is not the aim or the objective of having doctors trained in Ghana or working in Ghana. But listening to uh, Dr. Strebo over the weekend, I don't know if you were at that um, general meeting, what really comes to mind? What exactly would you say is happening? Yes, um, you know, I cannot but to agree with the treatment from uh, Dr. Strebo. Really, we have had series of cases of uh, alcohol and uh, substance abuse by doctors and also issues of uh, uh, harassment of patients. But I think that as a regulator, as a council, systems have been put in place to ensure that we really do not have some of these things happening in our healthcare institutions. What so, kind of system? Hello, yeah. okay. okay, you can conclude on that. Yeah, you know, because of these things that really had uh, uh, started coming into the medical fraternity, the Medical and Dental Council, as a regulator, 
with its objective to really um, protect the interest of practitioners and also the clients that they see put in place a system. And a comprehensive document was developed. The fitness to practice document was developed and uh, is being used to ensure that at least we have some sanity in the medical uh, fraternity. But more often than not, uh, the concern is that the, registry, the Medical and Dental Council, for instance, a system that has been put in place to check these, are more protective of the interests of the practitioners rather than the patients, such that it makes it difficult for patients to pursue cases, as we've seen, including medical negligence and this sexual harassment we talk about. Uh, put on record that that perception is not right. You know, a lot of people think that uh, the Medical and Dental Council is only made up of doctors, but I think that 50% of uh, members of the board are non-practitioners and therefore issues are really taken up uh, to really ensure that uh, the patients are protected. So that perception really, I want to put on record that it is a wrong perception. For the very and first if, if you are if you were a doctor and you have ever had a case with a medical and dental council, I'm sure you would have known that such uh, an issue or such a perception doesn't really exist. And I'm saying that for the very first time, at least, um, be monitoring uh, your annual general meetings. And for the very first time, I'm hearing the president of the Ghana Medical Association actually chiding your own members, talking about the increasing uh, spate of these vices amongst yourselves. How prevalent would you say is the situation? Is it that bad to the extent that you cannot have the, the president of the medical association raising it at your annual general meeting. Are we the current registrar because he will be in a position to really give you the current figures. But uh, before I really got out of uh, the medical and dental council, I know that it was on the ascendancy. And uh, uh, that is why efforts were being made to ensure that at least we do not have a number of people that have this issue of alcohol and substance abuse or to end up harassing uh, patients. What is accounting for this, though? Uh, uh, you know, doctors are also human beings. And uh, we're saying that you start school, there is this issue of peer uh, influence, and others, because of the stressful nature of the training, individuals really acquire certain habits, thinking that that would help them to really overcome some of the uh, stress associated with the medical training. And eventually they end up doing things that are untoward. But I think that there are varying factors. As I indicated, doctors are human beings as you and I, and they are also prone to some of these vices. But again, it is the regulator or the trainers that uh, put in place system to ensure that once you want to get into a profession, you don't get into that profession with some of these vices. I mean, considering, yeah, I know doctors are like all of us. They, they have blood running yeah. through their veins. Of course, so they have the vices. But their jobs, if they make a mistake, will lead to a life, possibly uh, somebody dying on their table. But now we are talking about doctors who are sexually harassing their patients who come to them. Uh, and also, they are on drugs or they are uh, intoxicated with alcohol. Yeah, you know, I have indicated that because of <laughs> issues like this, the Medical and Dental Council, which is the regulator, has put in place systems. You know, these systems really start from the time of anybody entering the medical school to go through the training process and then also graduate and be inducted into the profession. There is a lot of good supervision to ensure that at least some of these things are identified and dealt with. Uh, the council, which is the regulator, is not really, hasn't left out some of these things and they are continually monitoring and also getting people sanctions appropriately once they have been identified and then uh, proven to have committed some of these offenses. And uh, apologies about my cough, but the question we wanted to ask is, as a patient, when you get exposed to something like that in the doctor's consulting room, what do you do? The, the patient should immediately report to either the institution or anybody around. Because, you see, there are institutional structures. 
the assistance in the institutions which really give the patients, you know, the right to report. Unfortunately, you know, we Ghanaians have a habit, like uh, uh, my president said, that you see everything, everything is the witches and the wizards and all that. But, you know, if you are assaulted or if you are harassed in a consulting room by a doctor, I don't see where witchcraft comes into this. Therefore, when you go in and have such an experience, you immediately report. And I know that there are tables or there are systems in place in the various institutions which make provisions or make it possible for people to report. And once a report is made, uh, investigations are done and appropriate sanctions are meted on the culprit when found guilty. At, at what point then do you draw the line between getting medical care and being sexually harassed? For instance, you go to see your gynae and um, among, amidst the treatment, he says that he wants to actually examine you down there. But really, that's not why you went there. What, at what point really do you know that you are being sexually harassed when it comes to medical attention? Yeah, you see, uh, there are rules and regulations or there are ethics of the profession. Somebody comes complaining of lower, abdomen, uh, of lower abdominal pain. And the doctor tells you that, can you please go and get yourself undressed for me to examine you? Usually, the doctor consults with a nurse. And that nurse is to be there for the doctor to really examine. But if it so happens that the doctor goes in to examine, and then some interesting things start happening, then the, the, the client should really suspect that, this doctor is going too far. Certain times, I mean, I do remember a case that we had when a patient went to the doctor, the patient complained of lower abdominal pain, and if you want to have a holistic examination of the patient, in that case, there was the issue of the doctor going to even examine the breast of the woman. And that woman took an offense and reported. We went into the case, and it came out that actually the doctor was doing a holistic examination of the patient. He had nothing at all, uh, or he did not do anything at all. In cases like that, you see, once you suspect or once you are suspicious of a doctor doing anything at all, the best thing for you to get uh, to the root of the matter is for you to report either at the institutional level or you can get to the Medical and Dental Council and make a report to the Medical and Dental Council. We are grateful. And uh, that's uh, Dr. Eli um, Atipi there joining us on the line on this matter. Uh, we can also bring in Isaac Ampoma. He's a Greater Accra Regional Vice Chair of the Coalition of NGOs in Health. Uh, Isaac, you must be alarmed at what you're hearing. You're just hearing that the former registrar say before he left, these cases were on ascendancy. <coughs> Yes, indeed. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity and greetings and greetings to your your, your listeners. Uh, indeed, uh, recent time we've been hearing of uh, some professional negligence as a result of uh, 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 complaints coming from clients, and so these issues are alarming. I think some of the things that we think can help uh, uh, reduce these uh, incidents is that. Uh, there should be some uh, uh, enforcement in the human resource policies in many areas. And also, uh, we believe that there has to be a robust complaint feedback mechanism that will help uh, 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 clients and victims to be able to report some of these cases. Also, we need to ensure what we call internal uh, security uh, systems are there. Uh, in any case, a nurse and a doctor has to be uh, a composite situation in a room to ensure that uh, these things do not uh, occur or even reoccur periodically. I think also the doctors also need to be examined periodically. Some of them, in the case of the alcohol abuse, might have issues relating to their personal self and also some uh, uh, mental challenges as well. Uh, I believe some of these things need to be properly enhanced and enforced, and when these things are done. Uh, also, client needs to be uh, uh, sensitive enough to be able to engage the doctor to say, this is a no-go area, or why are you even asking me to do this or that? 
I believe when uh, uh, these things are enforced, some of these things will be reduced, and then things will come to uh, the, the 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 normal, uh, 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 rational thing that as a public servant. Uh, public service. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Isaac and Puma. There's a Greater Crow Regional Vice Show, the Coalition of Angels in Health, and some of you are already getting in touch with your own experiences and views on this matter. Well, we have one from Jonathan Gan West. He says, I agree with the GMA president and thank him for being bold about these issues. In fact, some of the doctors are worse than what the Honorable President said. The system is not punitive enough to doctors. They are often left off the hook. They collect illegal monies at will. Thank you, Dr. Srebo. It's a good step to take, he says. That's Jonathan's message. We have this one also. Um, it says the ideal situation. Okay. Well, it talks about um, what should happen amongst others. I think it's a different issue. And then this one says, MFA, do doctors in Ghana, well, I scroll down all the way um, to get that message, do doctors in Ghana not examine with chaperone, example, a nurse? And that's um, Nana, Spintex, uh, Nana from Spintex Road is asking why doctors do not do these examinations with um, chaperones. And we have this one also from um, Sena Hateka, okay. Um, Ruben Ahoga from Akachi in the Volta region. It says, this sexual harassment is becoming rampant and we must put a stop to it. And that's uh, Ruben's message. Thanks for sending that in. Many more um, of your messages that I'll try and go through. And this one also says, my daughter is in high school in the Volta region. A rather long one that I have to go through and has the severe stomach ulcer she developed after she started uh, the school. She's often rushed to this government hospital near her school when she suffers crisis. During one of crisis when she was in severe pain and visited the hospital this young doctor was sexually harassing her by stretching her legs under the table and was caressing her legs well it goes on and on a very long one can you imagine he says he even took her number and called her that same evening after she left the hospital to the school asking why she refused what he wanted to do to her how can a daughter a doctor want to take advantage of a girl in that kind of pain mf in tantra hill sends that one in uh, send more of your messages in 055 I hear that someone on the list is under. I ask myself, so will I also die? At the tear-filled speech of 13-year-old Rosemary Buedu, a diagnosed with end-stage kidney failure, desperately crying for help since her diagnosis, Rosemary, has been on dialysis for nearly three years. Like over 400 other dialysis patients in Ghana, she and her family are struggling to cope with the escalating cost of treatment, which recently increased. Now, with doctors recommending a kidney transplant to prevent her condition from worsening, her family is left grasping for support to afford the $25,000 life-saving procedure. We're hearing uh, some intervention that the National Health Insurance Authority says they will be putting in place for her. We're also hearing from the Vice President, uh, Dr. Mahmoud Baobi, on the subject of a uh, dialysis treatment in this country. All that pretty shortly. But here are excerpts of the Joy News feature titled Dialysis at 13 by my colleague, Iman Ojibin. <laughs> Will I be on dialysis for the rest of my life? Or will I get someone to help me out of this? Or that will be the end of my life? Yeah, of course, everybody on your phone. How can you be calling someone every day, every time to ask for money? I'm transplant. Na in Coromo was on or Modos or so far, Nancy say a car or no one. When I hear that someone on the list is at that, I ask myself, so will I also die? Now, in a positive turn, the government has announced that it will fully cover dialysis costs for all patients starting 1st December following a three-month pilot program initially focused on those above 60 and below 18. Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Balmia shared this news during his tour of the Ashanti region. National Health Insurance. No. Na eku, ye baye, ye di, ye pija National Health Insurance. No. Ye di sika, Na ushe suwa, e yaria na 
National health insurance. The national health insurance was collapsing when we came. We have invested in it and the illness that are not covered by the NHIS, we added it to it. Childhood cancer is now added to NHIS for free. Sickle cell is also free under the NHIS. A lot of people have kidney problems and they need dialysis. Dialysis is also expensive and a lot of people cannot afford it. So six months ago, we started pilot so that dialysis can be in the NHIS. The people after 60 and under 18 is taking dialysis free under the NHIS. From December 1, all kidney dialysis patients will be offered free treatment. Six months ago, you started pilot, so you the dialysis November National Health Insurance. Well, we're hearing from the CEO of the National Health Insurance Scheme, Dr. Abadja Da Costa, who has been explaining that the decision to expand the dialysis program was based on a cost-benefit analysis, which showed that the scheme could afford to cover all patients. Now, the data suggests that actually the cost can actually be take, can be accommodated by the NHIA. Pilots has actually ended, right. so we are now bringing it permanently on the NHIA. So it's starting on the 1st of December. First, we are adding it on 1st of December because we know the patients already benefiting from this dialysis uh, program that we're doing. But we are also expanding to bring comfort, more comfort to the, these patients. Uh, the numbers that were given to us by the association initially were around 600, 600. But actually, the actual numbers that we are serving currently is about um, 400. <clears throat> about 400 across the country? Yes. Yes, that's the okay. numbers that we are serving now under right. the pilots. Okay. Yes. Oh, uh, under the pilot. Mm -hmm. But but from the 1st yes. of December, how many do you expect to serve? You see, the, the fact of the matter is that they have an association. They have given us their numbers. I cannot challenge their numbers. And it has even been, um, I mean, we have even established that the numbers they even gave us were way below what was uh, the actual. Mm-hmm. Yes. So what so is the actual? It is open to all Ghanaians. Kodjo. We, NHI, we as NHI, the numbers we were working with initially were 600, okay? And mm -hmm. currently, the actual reflects about 400. And we've mm -hmm. been able to provide this service for all the patients without any cost of alarm. The good thing is that from 1st of December, we will continue to provide this service for them for free. Like I'm saying, if you look at the, the, the pilot figures, that was it. But even if it's uh, double that, it's still fine. Could you? So that's the CEO of the National Health Insurance Authority. Meanwhile, Renal Patients Association, they've welcomed uh, Vice President Baumier's announcement that's going to start on the 1st of December. President of the association, Kweju Bafwa Hinkra, says they were engaged by government before this decision was taken and hope it will not be a mere political promise. Uh, if only... It's not a political talk, and it's something they are going to do. It. And we can go. There have been a couple of meetings, and then we've seen the actual. The point is that if only they are not going to cut the National Health Insurance Fund, you know, it's being cut. It goes to the Consolidated Fund, and then the Consolidated Fund, they will write the Ministry of Finance, will write some checks to the National Health Insurance. So actually, they don't have access to the whole fund that is going to the national health insurance that we are paying. So it was one of the points that we raised at the meeting that if only they would do stop capping it and they would give the money to them. It's not only on dialysis. There are other, other diseases that they can take care of from the fund. It's come down to December 1. Mm. Uh, if you're one of those patients, you're looking forward to that. And on the subject of the 13-year-old, yeah. uh, the CEO of the National Health Insurance Authority had also promised on the Super Morning Show that he's going to bring that matter before the board of the National Health Insurance Authority for consideration because $25,000 is one mm. that he by himself cannot okay. sign without the board's approval. So he will do that and it's something that we'll follow up on uh, tomorrow. You can hear the full report. It's across our networks, also on uh, digital platforms. You want to make a date. For that. And still to come here on Newsnight, Commissioner of Charge becomes the latest to take on Ghana's judiciary, alluding to inherent rot, predictability, and lack of independence following Ghana's devastating performance on the Mo Ibrahim Index on governance. 
So I think the time has come for us to really set up the judiciary must sit up. It's not about trying to poo poo people and oh, there's nothing. We have the independence. We can do this. Look, there is a rot in the system. We need to root it out and do the right thing. Well, for business, George. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> business. Bank of Ghana warns of severe sanctions against institutions that breach the country's foreign exchange laws. We'll be getting you more details on that one. And some cocoa farmers describe as inadequate marginal increase in the producer price with the beans by government. The business news on Newsnight is brought to you by MTN Business. Welcome to the new world of business kingdom books and stationery. Synthes Tanks and the Pep Student Hebal. And Chaco. Welcome back to Business on News Night. Now, the Bank of Ghana has given the firm assurance that it will not hesitate to sanction any firm that fails to comply with the country's Foreign Exchange Act. It's coming out after it handed a one month ban on the services of remittance a firm topped up send in the country. There is more in this report. I believe this action should have started long ago. I have said it and I will continue to say it. These people are externalizing the dollar. So I'm not surprised that they have created a CD wallet to be able to take the foreign currency over of it. I the Bank of Ghana believes that the move will send signals to other players that it will not tolerate any institution that breaches its foreign exchange act, especially when it comes to remittance. The central bank argues that some of these actions are also needed to enhance market confidence while assuring players that it stands ready to strictly enforce the laws. The Bank of Ghana has also reminded all the financial institutions the need to comply with the directive of halting remittance termination partnership with Tap Tap Send. Meanwhile, the Bank of Ghana has told Joy Business that they don't expect their actions to deprive a lot of Ghanaians remittance services because there are a lot of players in the industry that they can turn to. Based on the letter from the Bank of Ghana to all financial sector players, the action on the remittance service provider tap tap send should end on December 8, 2024. And that is a business dex report. Now, some cocoa farmers have described as inadequate the marginal increase in the producer price of the bean by government. President Akufado last Friday announced an increase in the 64 kilo bag to 3,000. 100 Ghana cities. Isifu Isaka is the national president of the Ghana Cooperative Farmers Association. To me as a farmer and then um, knowing what is happening today, cocoa farmers, we thought the government could have increased the price more than what we are seeing today. Mm -hmm. Because uh, this year, for instance, we know that the government is not doing forward seas. Mm -hmm. uh, Ghana as a country is doing spot market. It means the availability of beans that we have is uh, what we are selling with the current prevailing price. Mm -hmm. And cocoa is trading around $7,000. So if you are, you are paying 3,100 Ghana cities, if you break it down to uh, the farm gate price, it means cocoa farmers are taking below 50%. But we, we, we've heard of uh, the president saying that uh, his government is committed to paying 70% of gross FOB. To cocoa farmers and today gross 70 percent of gross fob should be around 5500 and so i think uh, the government could have do better than what we, we, we had last friday is if we suck as the national president of the ghana cooperative cocoa farmers you should let hear from president Akufado, who says upon his instruction these adjustments will be done to match changes on the world markets a final statement to make to our cocoa farmers. On the advice of the producer price review committee, I announced an increase of the producer price of cocoa from 48,000 CDs to 49,600 per ton, or from 3,000 CDs per bag to 3,100 CDs per bag. This as a result of my instructions to the minister to ensure that as the market changes, there are periodic reviews to restore farmer incomes. 
And that is President Kufad. Now, the head of commercial banking at Kalbank POC, Daniel Lapia, a challenge more Ghanaian businesses to explore opportunities in the export market. He says this is important in boosting the city's performance and growing the economy. Mr. Lapia spoke to Joy Business at the opening of the Kalbank Trade Summit in Turkey. So we are coming out of a difficult economic situation. Uh, the dollar hasn't changed. Our currency keeps going up, but the dollar rate is the same. So imagine that you find a partner in Turkey or anywhere else in the world who you can actually export to. You are bringing Forex to the country. It's helping the economy to grow. So, and for those businesses who have been able to identify that and do that, it's worth their yeah, while. Wow. So even though we are coming out of a difficult economic situation, those who are able to make the sacrifice to get into this, that gives them the leeway. Now, several Ghanaian businesses are in Turkey for the next days to explore business opportunities in that country. The Deputy Controller and Accountant General in charge of Finance and Administration, Emilio Sedengi, is charging finance professionals to embrace the changing trends in the sector to grow the organization. The Deputy Controller said this, the conversation for the Association of International Certified Professional Accountants and Chartered Institute of Management Accountants in Accra. In an era where trust is undermined by uncertainty and misinformation, being a SIMA member gives you and your skills credibility. I believe this designation will open doors for you as you start out on your long and successful career, full of opportunities and paths to take you across different organizations and around the world. It is not just the accreditation that will help you. It's more of the skills that you have gained and the ongoing learning that you have committed to by becoming a management accountant. The convocation ceremony saw some 65 Ghanaians awarded a various awards for accountant and finance professionals when it comes to the Chartered Global Management Accountant designation. Now, Japan Motors had announced plans to begin production of these new models in the Gili cars from Ghana. According to the company, this will transform the country's mobility landscape and improve the road transport. General Manager in charge of sales and marketing at Japan Motors, Amir Karaba, discloses to Joy Business after the launching of three new models of the vehicle in Accra. It's going to really change the automotive industry to take it to a new level altogether. The way uh, the products, the new products are being equipped, are being designed, are being uh, fit in technology that we have never seen before. And I can tell you this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. We've got uh, three models, one of which is uh, the Kuri, which we are going to assemble in Ghana. And this is going to be also another very, very successful model that is equipped with amazing, amazing future. I'm, I'm really mean it. Amini Kabara is the marketing uh, general manager in charge of sales and marketing at Japan Motors. To the stock market, if you're a shareholder of MTN Ghana, you lost two pesos on each share that you're holding, and now it's worth two Ghana cities, 33 pesos. UCB was up by 10 pesos to close at six Ghana cities, 25 pesos. And that's all for business on Newsnight. And it's back to, let's talk some sports <laughs> news uh, from uh, Tamaklo. Well, let's get into it because the Black Stars of Ghana held their first training session at the Accra Sports Stadium ahead of the AFCON 2025 qualifiers against Angola and Niger. Up to eight players took part in today's training session, which was open to the press and to the general public. Isaac Afol of Samatex, Emmanuel Entry, Razak Simpson, um, Mohamed Kudus, Elisha Usu, Joseph Walakot, and Osman Bukhari were the players who took part in today's training session after eight players pulled out of the qualifiers earlier today. Antoine Semenyo, Inyake Williams, Jonas Ajete, Tarek Lamte, Jerome Opoku, Alexander Jiku, Ibrahim Osman, and Joseph Pintel are the eight who uh, withdrew from Otuado's call-up. Here's Gideon Menza who says the situation is unfortunate. Uh, for me, I think, um, first of all, every player in the national team is very uh, crucial to the team. And then, um, obviously, we have uh, we have players that are we are always looking up to see in the national team, and we have players that are also there to support when the other players are not there. I mean, um, it's, um, it's a big loss for us, but also at the end of time, at the, at the end of the day, we still have a team to, to cover up. And then um, I'm not I'm not really scared about that, but like I said, everybody's uh, crucial to the team. So one is not there, one is uh, ready to to play. So.
Black Stars, that was Gideon Mensah, Black Stars defender, speaking to my colleague Daniel Crantin live at the team's training base today. Thank you very much, Mr. Tamaklo. Well, let's do some of your messages. Um, this one from Robert in Kokobite in Accra. Can the GMA clarify if we have a safeguarding policy in Ghana that protects affected persons? Uh, we've been hearing from the uh, Dental and Medical Council mentioned that, yeah, there's some measures in place for that. We have this one also on some other stories that we've been covering from Top Story up until now. This one says Samson nailed it when he said it does not take the Supreme Court to get Parliament to sit. The ruling of a speaker was made in Parliament when he had a decision uh, making or forming a quorum, he says, and it's a rather long one. I have this one also um, from Albert from East Legon, and he's also touching on the Supreme Court, and he says, if the Supreme Court rules that the four MPs' decision does not relate to this current parliament, if any one of them wins their seat, this issue will go to court again. And we're looking forward to that ruling um, tomorrow by the Supreme Court, then we'll get to have all the details. It's a live your news tonight. It's on Joy 99.7 FM and MFI. I'm, I'm pretty sure you know by now that the judiciary has scored poorly in the latest Mo Ibrahim Index of African Governance. And following that, we're hearing from the Commission on Human Rights and Administrative Justice. And the uh, commissioner there has acknowledged that judicial independence in the country has been significantly eroded under the leadership of uh, the president and uh, Adodankwa Kufuado. The report also sheds light on the growing interference within the judiciary and highlights the erosion of the rule of law. Uh, that coupled with other issues and environmental degradation has contributed uh, to Ghana's sharp decline uh, in the rankings. Well, uh, we'll be hearing today from Joseph Wittal, who's launched a scathing critique of the judiciary and its bias, he says, is no longer a perception uh, but a reality. Uh, let's get to the specifics here. Um, how did Ghana fare specifically as far as the judiciary and the rule of law is concerned? So the report showed that judges' autonomy have declined by 50%. Interestingly, when the current government came into power in 2017, the autonomy of the judges was at 100. It has since 2018 dropped to 50 point index and that's what the report says also judges impartiality has dropped by 30 percent from 2014 ghana ranked 95.3 but dropped to 68.3 in 2023 well we'll be hearing from uh, joseph withal he's uh, agreed with the findings he says the judiciary uh, is currently at its lowest ebb he launched a scathing critique of it he says the uh, bias of the judiciary is no longer a perception but a reality and Ghana must stop burying itself, its head in the sun like an ostrich. As a practitioner of about 34 years, I'm used to judgments or opinions that are given by a superior court with judges at least making an attempt to show a difference in which they are going to support the final judgment. They will still give some differences of how they perceive the issues. But for now, most of the critical uh, political cases, you see unanimity. And no wonder, you remember the Chief Justice and the one Superior Court Judge, Justice Atuguba, retired, both retired, indicating that there's predictability. And this report too has come to highlight the predictab predictability. Well, there must be a basis for that. It means there is some influence somewhere. So I think the time has come for us to really set up. The judiciary must sit up. It's not about trying to poo poo people and, oh, there's nothing. We have the independence. We can do this. Look, there is a rot in the system. We need to root it out and do the right thing. So then it means that perception is more like the reality now. And that is why I'm saying, no, we need to look at where we have come from. Our judicial independence has been eroded, even though on paper it is there. So what do we do about that? We need to take practical steps. I need to ask this question about what you pointed out. True, President Akufuado has more appointees at the Supreme Court. But it's not just mere coincidence. He happened to have been president at the time that a lot more people were retiring. They need that to be replaced. Yes, of course. That is the, the, his prerogative. I fully agree with it. But it's a coincidence. That also coincides with the deterioration. And so we must examine the, 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 the situation, unfortunately, which has occurred under his regime, 
having been the one who has appointed majority of judges to the superior courts. Let's talk about fixing the problem. When Chief Justice um, Getu Chokoni came in, she embarked on a project to make justice accessible to people. Are you saying that it is too early to assess the impact of this project on the justice delivery system, or we need more than just what she has started to fix the current problem with our judiciary? I'm one of those who welcome the, 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 the improvement that the current CJ Chief Justice is bringing to the system. Talk about digitalization and, and all that. But attitudes and behaviors take long to change. And that is what we are confronted with. Lou Ibrahim has been coming every year. But even though she has started these uh, reforms about a year or two ago, we are not seeing the manifestation. In fact, we are seeing a deterioration. So that is what the report points out. And, and that's what I meant by let us not. Uh, put our heads in the, the, the sun as ostriches, but meet it head on, because too many negative things are happening to our courts, and we need them to be pristine, to be able to be bulwarks of democracy that anyone can run to when there are problems with the other arms of government. That's Commissioner of Shraj, Joseph Wittau. Well, on the controversy um, surrounding the parliamentary seats vacancy, we've been hearing from NDC presidential candidate John Ramani Mahama, and he says this is not, a, we cannot get a legal resolution to this matter, but can only be addressed through political means. Asama Aba Parliament, Supreme Court, and Tim Ankamiya Mampinia, Mijidi said, Sain Ankamiya, Ankamema. Afenyo Marking, leader of MPP in Parliament, Akoyi Assembly Free Supreme Court. Na my friend speaker, my friend leader of NDC, leader leadership of MPP. Na menya asofu peni be any council of state, uh, national peace. If I were the president, I would have made Afenyo Marking the leader of the NPP to withdraw the case from court. Then engage NDC leaders, the speaker and bring in some respected clergy and members of the Peace Council to resolve the issue so that Parliament can function effectively again. Regarding the constitutional review that President Atamils initiated, we'll continue with it. The current situation arose due to a gap in the Constitution. If it had clearly outlined a solution, this problem would not have arisen. As stated in our manifesto, we plan to hold a constitutional validation conference to address issues like this. Constitution number cancer, we and the editum in our manner. So, to me, cancer, I did a way in the only parliament view. And to you, and you may be brave, or what, a free time, I did constitution and start a year, you know. You will say, I'm ready and talk around, talk around, be our constitution. And to you, say, yes, so I know, not your feelings and talk around, you know, send a bear. I'm running a bit in my age, you know, I'm mine. And to you, and no, you are there, or share your constitution, you say, a bar. You better hold the constitutional validation conference. To you, I don't watch it. And to make us say, a beer at the bar. Bianca, a castle, a vessel, and a whom he had you, and a fee be beat to set near C, Supreme Court, near Parliament, and Tim Yan Jim, who am found car constitutional review no more, and to the answer near the Abeka home, and to a bear validation conference of report of constitutional review committee no near a share near a dasu here, say your bets, your bear amendment, and I say your amendment near your share near here. Well, so that's um, former President John Ramani Mahama in the Ashanti region. And we know that um, the NPP candidate and Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Baumia is also in the Ashanti region on a 15-day tour of the region amidst and the announcement of that free dialysis starting on the 1st of December. Uh, today, he's been in the Busumtri um, constituency and he's accused the opposition NDC of campaigning on propaganda in the Busumtri constituency instead of presenting what he describes as a credible alternative to the NPP development agenda and my colleague Nanabwa Chidankwa Yadom is with the team and will bring us more subsequently and just before we head out um Big Chef Evans you know how to cook yeah I'm, what, I'm what very good cook? I'm very good with uh, jollof jollof okay yes, I, I can I can invite you and, and do some for you okay we'll see I can how bring you some tomorrow please do please and don't let your wife cook it bring me some yeah. but yes what you missed on the Big Chef Tertiary so contestants, if you can't hear me, mount your stations. Are you ready for today's task? Yes. yes. 
you are to prepare a three course meal that's giving us the chef's experience the chef's dining experience so we want to see a starter the main dish and dessert and you have 30 minutes ladies and gentlemen your time starts now saying it three two one it's stop work hands up do not touch anything turn off your banners kevison what do you have we did salty uh, salty water delight just by looking at your main meal to me it looks too oily all right so for the starter we made a fusion of beetroot cucumber and um orange and then for the main dish we made seafara I don't like your main. I, I like your dessert. When you're working with fish, try as much as possible to put in a little bit of lemon. But, uh, today, the Star School is going to Kumasi Technical University. <laughs> and Tamale, congratulations as well. I was hoping for some Ademe in there somewhere. <laughs> you and your Ademe. Yeah. Well, that's Big Chef Tesheri, and it's on the Joy Prime.